my talk, and of course it's also in the conclusion of my book, is that this idea of imagining what it would have been like if Trotsky had succeeded. Okay, if Trotsky and the other conspirators had succeeded in allying with Nazi Germany and the, the Axis, getting the Soviet Union to either ally with them or, or let it be taken over by right. Germany and Japan completely. Uh, what, how the world would have been different. Okay, so the Soviets really, and I say the Soviets really saved us. Stalin, if you want to put it that way. Stalin saved the world twice, not just during the war, but in crushing this uh, conspiracy. Uh, which would have been devastating to the working class and many, many others uh, all around the world. And I think that, that that just has some bearing on the issue that uh, Elazar raised about uh, Trotskyism. Uh, Trotskyism was outlawed in the Soviet Union pretty early on. And it's been said and thought and you know, written about since then that, oh, you know, this was, this was terrible, this was no good, and so forth. But the so now we know that the Soviets actually had, have it, had, had good evidence that, that Trotskyism was, a, was a, a, a deeply fascist movement within the Soviet Union. Yes, yeah, sure, they called themselves the true communists, but they were a deeply fascist movement. The Soviets had no way of knowing, the communist movement had no way of knowing how much the Trotskyists around the world knew. I wrote, published an article a year or so ago mm -hmm. about Spain, about the Spanish Civil War. Oh, yeah. And, um, it's on my webpage. You can download it. And um, one of the things I point out is that um, the, uh, the Soviets, you know, really went after the Poon in the, after the May Day in Barcelona of 1937. And the Poon, uh, the most active people in the Poon were, were Trotskyists. And they really went after them because... As far as they were concerned, the Trotskyists were all in league with the Nazis because they knew that Trotsky was. Now, we can't prove today that all of the Trotskyist leaders were, in fact, in league, consciously in league with the Nazis, just because Trotsky was. But the Soviets didn't know that at that time. Uh, they had already said it's a crime to belong to a Trotskyist movement because this is a fascist movement in, 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 that's conspiring with Nazi Germany and Japan. Um, and therefore, if you were a Trotskyist, you were presumed to be a Nazi ally. And so they really went after the Poon, and they had good reason. That was their reason to do it, and they were right to do it. The Tukhachevsky affair trial had just taken place, and I have a chapter in this book, uh, the book that we're talking about here, uh, where I discuss all of the uh, statements about Trotsky that were made by the defendants in the Tukhachevsky uh, affair trial. And they indict Trotsky as one of the leaders of this, uh, of this conspiracy over and over and over again. They give details. They, they uh, talk about uh, meetings with his son. And, uh, they, uh, and it's, not, it's not faked. And nobody's putting these words in their mouths. Mm -hmm. So then that's when the uh, Soviets start to really go after the Trotskyists in Spain. Up until that time, you know, they kept an eye on them. They hadn't done that much. That's when they really go after them. They kidnap, I think, or arrange to have kidnapped some of their leaders, like Erwin Wolf and some others, and uh, uh, they, they disappeared. Uh, they shoot uh, uh, Andres Nin. Andres Nin had been very close to Trotsky. There's no reason to think that he wasn't a Nazi conspirator. Whether he really was or not, the point is that Trotsky certainly was. And uh, they just decided that the, that the Trotskyist movement was this uh, fascist criminal movement. Uh, today we don't know how much these, the uh, you know how much of these uh, non-Soviet Trotskyists, uh, Trotskyists in the movement outside the Soviet Union knew. But what we do know is that they were essentially calling, uh, believing everything that that Trotsky said, and calling Stalin, you know, a totalitarian, just like Hitler and stuff like this. Um, so I think it, it uh, these primary source documents that show that the Soviets were acting in completely good faith in in uh, in uh, prosecuting uh, the oppositionists and in, and in uh, identifying Trotsky as a, one of the major leaders or not, leaders of this uh, of this very very dangerous opposition, I think that that shows that they were they had every reason to act in the way that they uh, were acting uh, uh, in, in during during this period of time. And by the way, there's um, there's some evidence. I don't say it's conclusive. There's some evidence that. Uh, 
that Trotsky was uh, still in touch with the Germans after, even after this period, right up until uh, 1939 or 1940. Uh, certainly, uh, the Soviet government thought that if Trotsky were still alive when the Germans attacked, he would play a very destructive role in dividing uh, working class opinion, of writing working class support around the world uh, uh, against uh, the Soviets. We know that the Finnish government discussed in January 1940 inviting Trotsky to form a, um, a uh, provisional uh, government of the Soviet Union, you know, a, a, parallel, a parallel government of the Soviet Union. Uh, you know, so that so that I think this is probably the reason why the Soviets had Trotsky assassinated in 1940, because the war was coming on and he was bound to play uh, a very dangerous role uh, in that in that war.